A man prepares coffee for himself and his workmates for the start of a working day. They make the coffee in the traditional way of desert peoples, using coffee pots of traditional designs. They live a life, in fact, that is bound by tradition and custom, where every man knows his place and the skills that are required of him. For these men, however, the daily work does not take place in the dry, burning sands of a limitless desert. Their working world is the sea, their life as different from desert life as it's possible to imagine. For centuries, men like these and their ancestors have set off down the beach day after day to their boats to fish the rich waters of the Gulf coasts. It's a life that has scarcely changed throughout countless generations, a life of rigorous hard work, using skills that have been handed down unchanged from father to son from the earliest days. But it's a way of life that may not last much longer, and the scenes in this film may one day be the only remains of the ways that the fishermen of the Gulf lived and worked. Traditional fishing and sailing techniques vary from one part of the Gulf Coast to another. That's because different stretches of the Gulf have different fishing conditions. Some waters are shallow with smooth, sandy beds. Some deep, some lined with shoals and reefs. Each variety means different types of fish, different boats and catching techniques, different nets. Boats and crews differ in size from the canoe-type hurry or the primitive shasha boats, with crews of only three or four, up to the large Amla boats, with as many as 40 men rowing. And there are sailing boats, like the Shahufa, with crews ranging from three to eight, or even more. Some boats, like the one these fishermen are using, may be rowed or sailed. Rowing is used for short runs or when the air is still. But where there is sufficient breeze, the sails are hoisted on longer runs. These fishermen will be away from home for a night and a day. They are sailing off to fishing grounds farther up the coast. <laughs> Soon after they disembark at their catching grounds, the men must prepare for the night's work ahead. And one of their first tasks is to get their nets in order. The nets must be inspected inch by inch and any damage repaired so that fish can't slip through. Apart from their boat, their nets are their most valuable piece of equipment. Different fishing grounds need different nets. For deeper waters, nets have floats at their top and weights at the bottom, and they are threaded along their length with ropes. When the fish swim in, the fishermen close the nets around them by pulling and therefore tightening the ropes. For fish that swim at lower levels, nets are used that trawl the fish from the sea bottom. But these men here will be fishing from very shallow waters, too shallow even for their boats. So they use quite a different netting technique, as we shall see later on.
After the inspection and repair of their nets, it's time for a midday meal. And the meal, like every aspect of their lives, is traditional as well. Large bowls of rice, topped with vegetables and pieces of fish, and shared communally by all the men. In fact, the fish that the Gulf Coast fishermen catch makes up a very substantial part of the people's diet and is one of the Gulf population's main sources of animal protein. Their average fish consumption amounts to about 60 pounds per person every year, and that is well above the average of 20 pounds throughout the rest of the world. But in spite of their high consumption of fish, they catch far more than they need to feed themselves, and the surplus fish are sold fresh to merchants, or gutted and dried in the sun for export overseas, as far afield as East Africa and Southern Asia. After the meal, the men wash their hands and get ready to offer up their prayers. All along the Gulf Coasts, fishermen and crews of different territories, some of them hundreds of miles apart, are united in spirit at this moment as at all times of prayer. All the Gulf states have communities of fishermen, large and small, with their own traditions and individual histories dating back two or three centuries or even more. Over 200 years ago, for example, men from tribes well inland from Abu Dhabi set up a temporary base for fishing on Abu Dhabi. That settlement has developed into today's thriving city, which, with other important centers along the Gulf, owe their origins to fishermen and seafarers like these. Now it's late afternoon, and the fishermen row out to the catching grounds in their homemade boat. Because of their long seagoing traditions, Gulf Coast people soon became expert builders of all types of boat. The old boat makers learned their craft simply by experiment and experience, and handed down the traditional skills from generation to generation. In this way, they were able to construct boats of all kinds, without using plans or any blueprints to work from. For these men, the fishing grounds are not out at sea, but in the shallow waters alongside the shore. They will not be using a boat for catching. Instead, they will carry out their fishing on foot. They set up their nets like a barricade along the water's edge, using the poles they brought with them when they set out this morning. The poles are lined up at intervals, pushed into the sandy seabed, and the nets are strung out along them. continues into those final moments before sunset. The fish which they are going to catch move up only with the nighttime currents, and so all they can do now is wait. One of the most pleasant ways to pass the hours of nighttime waiting is to build a campfire and use it to keep warm against the sudden chill of night and to cook the evening meal. In this way, the hours pass in talking, eating, and music. Uh, 
Finally, the time comes when they know by long experience that their fish will be streaming into the waters of their nets. the waters of the Gulf are rich in fish. Just outside the Arabian Gulf, the neighboring seas of Oman and the Indian Ocean have natural fish resources which are among the largest in the world. Indeed, the Indian Ocean has been described as the last great unfished ocean on Earth. But even within the Arabian Gulf itself, there are abundant fisheries. Especially